Hi, my name is April Frederick, and I'd love to talk to you today about a project I'm currently developing. It's called Her War, and it's an opera for soprano and trumpet based on the female experience of PTSD in World War I. So this is the nurses, the ambulance drivers, and the VAD, so the Voluntary Aid Detachment, who worked alongside the men in various capacities, often under shell fire, just as the men were, in some theatres of war actually fighting alongside them, but who, when they returned to the UK, were not offered pensions the same way as the men were. They had this two-year lag where they had to fight the right to even go to the tribunal, and when they were there, they had to fill out forms and go through structures that were intended for men. I suppose the whole project began with my interest in the effect of World War I on that generation of creatives. This led to my master's and doctoral work on Ivor Gurney, a composer and poet who was in the trenches, and whose perspective on the war and synthesis of his war experience and his later life were pretty unique. I then met up with Simon de Brule, whom I knew as a soloist through various capacities and orchestras we both work with. We'd met up to talk about a completely different project, but as we are both researching performers and we're talking about our interests, I was talking about my interest in World War I, and I came up with this idea and I said, hey, Simon, we both have this huge range of colors and eloquence in our own instruments. What if we did a work that gave us the stricture of just those two instruments on this topic, on PTSD, and just saw what that gave us? It was just crazy enough to work, so we just thought we'd run with it. The next thing was to find a composer. Simon had worked with Edwin Roxburgh several times before and knew he had pre-existing interest in the effect of the war on the people who were involved. And we also felt that his combination of kind of dissonance and lyricism and his experience writing for solo instruments would make him an ideal partner. So we were delighted when he agreed to come on board. Then we had to find someone to write the words. And this was a really important choice for me because I wanted someone who was suffused in the subject matter, who was intimately familiar with the historical source documents. And so I reached out to the writers who were involved in the BBC Radio 4 drama Tommies, which was following troop movements on a day-to-day -day basis through World War I. I was thrilled when the Tommies creator, Jonathan Ruffalo, got back in touch and expressed interest in the project. It was Jonathan who actually gave us the impetus to switch our focus from the men's experience to the women's, because he rightfully pointed out that there is a fair body of work, especially after the centenary, focusing on the men's experience, but barely anything comparatively thinking about the women's experience. And the other thing that Jonathan brings to the table that is so important is this current experience working with ex-servicemen and women. So it's that kind of historical context plus the current context of people who are experiencing ongoing tribunals and similar circumstances now. One other unique aspect to the project is that we are trying to make it trauma-informed. The cellist and play therapist Emma Claire Wynne-Jones is helping us to understand some of the physiological and psychological patterns and outworkings of trauma and helping us to think about how we can work those into our creative process and into the fabric of the music and the movement. Emma is also helping us to design some engagement work where we can contrast the clunky, somewhat confrontational mechanism of the tribunal, both then and now, with a much more sort of restorative context where we use the lived experience of these historical women from whose accounts the libretto is drawn as a prompt to allow people whose experience resonates with that now to be heard and to find some healing and also to participate kind of in the making of the work. It's been a huge challenge to consider how we can bring this project to fruition in the current climate. We had applied for funding back in the spring for this year's 2020 Tet to Tet Festival, and that fund, like so many, were closed and rerouted due to the pandemic, and we thought, right, well, there's no way we can make it happen this year. And then in May, Tet to Tet offered us a slot and said, do what you can, get as far as you can, use this in whatever way you wish to in order to progress the show. And so we've decided to present an R&D segment, a taster, if you will, of a larger work which we are developing. I have to say that Tete Tete has been an astounding partner throughout this process. They have been so supportive and gracious and flexible, keeping us all apprised of the government guidelines as they come out, the implications for our shows, and making a real sort of community of makers that can support each other. And it's also been really inspiring to see how they are really on the forefront 
of finding a way to respond constructively and creatively to the strictures that the pandemic gives us, to find a way to reinvent, to roll with those punches and not just give up, but find a different way to engage. And it's just been so wonderful to be one of the makers that is involved in that process. So we hope that you will follow us as the project develops, that you will join us for whatever form the premiere takes on the 18th of September, and that you will follow the future progress of the project. Thank you so much.